Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video! In today's video I am once again taking a look at one of your designs that you have linked me in the comments section of one of my videos. And for today we're looking at the Gladius which is a transportation spaceship for you to download and fly through your survival world with. So this ship is quite large actually, it features no mods, it has absolutely everything you need to survive on the interior, it's got plenty of defence and it's got a nice large hangar for you to store a small mining ship or maybe even a small fighter in. Pressing F10 and finding it in the spawn menu, there it is. This ship is 2448 blocks and it uses the decorative block number 2 DLC pack, decorative block number 1 and the Economy Deluxe DLC pack. So we're going to start by taking a look around the outside, then we're going to go for a tour of the interior. Now it's very easy to get lost in the interior, so that might take some time to do. Then we're just going to fly it around and maybe shoot up the starting green base. So at the very front here where I am standing, we've got some lovely block works with our bridge. Yes, it's a very nice bridge. We do have a nice lot of protection on our left and our right, thanks to the two parts in the cells. Let's sit right there, I think that's the right word this time. I, last time I think I called them nasals and I usually just call them pointy parts, but you get the idea. Yes, we've got some window blocks there which is just acting as small little guard covers for everything behind them. And it does look great. On our left and our right we've got some interior turrets which is the main form of defence on this ship. We also have some light blocks there just to make it look glorious when it's flying through the darkness. If I just come down below the bridge we've got some more turrets and we got some spotlights and we can see some hydrogen thrusters. Now this ship features all three types of thrusters so you're great for going absolutely everywhere. So along the side here we've got a nice window piece which allows us to look inside at our cryopods. Now this is one of many rooms that feature cryopods but I will show that more when I go around the inside. As we move along the side there we've got a proper Gatling turret which is going to really help against those pesky drones. And down below here, we've of course got our first of many ways into the ship. Now this has been set up so we can easily hop on onto that ladder and get up to that little catwalk while we're on the planet without using our jetpack, which is always a fantastic idea to have set up. You never know when you might be in a pickle, lost all your jetpack and need to get back into your ship to recharge yourself. We have an interior turret that sits just below the door for some additional protection. And then we got an auction farm there, just for a little bit of extra auction generation. Moving along the side, we got some unfinished spotlights, which sit just below some windows, which are the bed blocks. We can see a landing gear on, because we can clip ourselves straight onto the ground. And then just moving up to here, we've got another little window piece that allows us to peer inside. Moving on down and around to the back of the ship, there is an ion thruster. And we can see some connectors, which are very useful things to have. You never know when you might need to connect up to a larger ship or a base to refuel yourself or to drop off some materials. Around the back here we've got some lovely pointy block work which does look great when you're looking at it from a top down position. We've got a doorway there which is another way inside the ship and here are our main thrusters to push us along. So we've got some large ion thrusters, we've got some large hydrogen thrusters, and we can see the two connectors at the bottom there and at the top here we've got some more ion thrusters pointing down We've got some more interior turrets and we've got a small hangar door which is how we're going to primarily get in and out when we're settled down and ready to start building stuff around us. Dropping down and coming underneath we can come past these lovely little lights and past the ion thrusters. We can see both our landing gears. We've got some solar panels underneath which is quite a nifty thing actually. It's a nice way of skipping out on bits of detail by slapping a solar panel on there because while you're in space you never really realise how much the sun will be underneath you. Anyway, moving along, this is our main hangar. It's quite a sizey hangar actually, so if I come up and inside, this is what we get. So we can fit quite a reasonably sized miner or a fighter in here, and we do have some connection points up there to stop us from rattling around while this thing is moving. Away from the hangar doors, we can see we've got some more iron thrusters and our first atmospheric thrusters just to help us on a planet. Then moving around to here, some large hydrogen thrusters, we've got some more window blocks that allow us to peer inside, and there are our interior turrets that we saw at the very start. Coming up and above, we'll take a quick look up here, we've got some lovely glass window pieces that allow us to peer inside, and when you're on the inside you can see the glorious skybox all around you. 
There are our turrets just for some help. We've got some auction tanks on here, which are all being connected up. We've got an antenna here to always broadcast our signal and a laser antenna there sitting at the back next to another unfinished spotlight with an unfinished interior pillar on top of it for some decoration and some more interior turrets. Now in here we can see into our little airlock type thingy Bob, Bob where we can come through this doorway here to another hangar doorway which will then lead us to the very back of the ship. It's a little bit awkward to use, I think I'm just being a little bit rushed when I try to play around with it. Yes there is quite a delay when opening and closing that front door and opening and closing the other one. And then moving to the back of the ship, we've got some window blocks there just protecting those conveyors going around the side. There are some more hydrogen, some more iron thrusters. And we have this little walkway right here where we can get up to this hangar door and some buttons in front of it to control it. This little walkway right here will then lead us into the actual ship itself right here. And we do have some lovely block work right there for some more decoration. But that all done and out the way, that was a very quick look around the outside because now it's time to get inside the ship and see what it has to offer. So finding my character right over here, which doorway do we go in? I think we should go in on the back door. So coming all the way around to here and dropping down, I will see if I can bring the sun back around. There we go, that'd be nice. We can just walk around to here and then we've got some buttons. So they're both going to do the exact same thing where they'll cycle the back hanger. We press this button and the door's going to open. When that opens up completely, we can walk inside and it should close up. That will then allow us to sit in here and then get in through that door. So there we go, that's now going to close up. We'll then get pumped full of oxygen and then this doorway will open up. It's a slow but nice way of avoiding using a script. So that is now going to open up and allow us to go inside. Now I will just hop in through here just before it closes up and just talk about those buttons over there. So those buttons over there will do the exact same thing where they can cycle the airlock or you can just open up the back hangar door manually without triggering the timer block. There was also one more button on there which is for the hangar below us but we can control that a different way. But now we're on the interior of this ship but we've got a nice view up there where our antenna is and our interior turrets are. Then we've got some button panels on the left and the right to cycle the airlock once again. So let's walk down our DLC stairs and come into here. So we've got little window blocks that allow us to see right below us, which is quite neat. I do like being able to see that because you can see little sneaky people running across there and call them out. So we can climb up this ladder over here, which will then take us on a loop all the way around to back to where we started on the outside. So coming through this doorway here and ignoring this room, we get to a double door and we are back here. So that's a nice alternative way of getting in and out. So just closing that up and coming back through here, we will go back to that other room in just a bit, but we have to talk about this one. So this is like our cargo hold for small goods. So say you're trading in tools or in bottles, whatever, you can store them in here and then just transport them outside very easily. Walking along, we've got some lockers on the left and the right, and we've got some jump drives, which means we are jump capable. We can jump approximately 3000 kilometers, which is adequate. We've got some gyroscopes on here and we've got the jute blocks just to make sure you're having fun while loading up all these cargo freights. Now we do have a stairs which are being carefully hidden by these planters which we can walk down which will then take us to our bridge where we can fly the ship and control everything going on with it. We've got some planters there with some DLC corner tables, we've got our control seats which are going to control the hangar doors at the back of the ship so I can press that which will then cycle the airlock then we can press it again to stop it. And then I'll come back to those two seats a little bit later on. But this is our bridge. We can see the jump drive sticking out here, which we saw above, which we can easily access if we want to switch them off manually. But now we've got a few ways where we can go. We can go around this room right here, which will then take us to a small little recreation area where we can cook our food, sit on our little desk and walk up to our cryopods, which sit up there. We've got a small vending machine so we can order a drink. And then we can come around to here where we've got a shower and we've got a toilet to do your business on. Walking all the way around to here and coming up these steps, we've got some armory lockers and we've got a contracts vendor right there. We've got this lovely glass piece here where we can view outside at the oncoming missiles and whatnot and a little support pillar there for decoration. I don't know why but I really like this pillar. It's just an odd thing to have on a ship. It's usually something you'd see on a base. But anyway, we can just walk all the way around to here. We've got a lovely passageway 
or we can come through this doorway here, which will then lead us to the outside where our ladder is sitting. Just closing through here and coming through this doorway, we then come to our first junction room. Now there are two junction rooms. If I was to come through this doorway over here and through here, we then have a secondary junction. But we do have this little intermittent room where we see an O2H2 generator, lots of hydrogen thrusters, lots of iron thrusters, and some more atmospheric thrusters. Behind us, nothing much. But coming back into this room, we can then come through this doorway here, which is once again a double door, which will lead us to the outside at the back of the ship. Just coming back through here and closing that up. We've got our gravity generator. We've got a survival kit to respawn on. We have a transparent LCD screen over here, and we've got another survival kit and a programmable block for you to do whatever with. On the floor below, we've got a small cargo container for you to quickly access everything on the ship. And we've got some reactors going all the way around the side with some timer blocks just sitting there. Coming up the steps over to here and all the way up around our half steps, we've got another little window piece that allows us to view outside. And turning around here, we've got our first little medical bay area where we've got our proper medical bay. We've got some beds going around. We've got a vendor there. We've got a locker. We've got another contracts vendor sitting up there planter, some more gyroscopes, and we just walk around all the way around up to here and see what we've got. Oh, it's a vending machine, isn't it? Not a vendor. Yes, walking around to here, we can come through this doorway, another double door, which will then lead us to the outside once again, which I suppose we could just go and walk to the opposite side, because that is where we're going to head right now. So on this side right here, this is the proper medical bay, not the other side. That was more of a recreation area. That's my fault. This is where we've got our MRI machine. We then got an upside down cooker where we can do some science stuff. Our medical bay, we've got a locker up there. Another locker there. Some beds. We've got some more gyroscopes on the ceiling. And we've got some freight crates that sit on top of that upside down kitchen block. So now we're back on the bridge. We can then go one floor low, which will be to our hangar. So pressing this button right here will open up the hangar and allow your ship to get in and out. Or you could use this as an emergency escape. So say you're under attack, you can just jump out of here and hope you'll survive. Going back through here, we still have a few more ways to go. So over here, we can look down at the glass below us to make sure it's safe to drop out. And there is another DLC window block with some more stair windows in front of it. So just walking all the way back around to here, we can then close that up once again. And then I think... Where do we have to go now? Have we been through this area right here? No, we have not. So below us is the hangar, and above us is our starting room, so we can see the hangar doors right there. And we can come up to here, view the little thrusters which we saw earlier, come through this doorway right here, which would take us to the thrusters we saw earlier, and then we're back to where we just started. Through this doorway will take us outside, and I believe we could have seen everything on this ship. I will just come around to here, to make sure I haven't missed anything, that is back to our little medical bay room. That leads outside. Nope. It looks like we have done everything on this ship. It's a bloody fantastic interior. It does take a little bit of getting used to to make sure you're not going around in a circle. And some rooms do start to look the same. But nevertheless, it's got absolutely everything you need and more. So now it's time for me to get into the cockpit and fly this ship. The two control seats that sit on the side do the exact same thing. They control the hangar doors around the ship. This flight seat over here can control the seat, but it does not control the majority of the stuff on this. It's more turret controls and connector controls. Coming over to here, this is our main flight seat where we can fly this thing around and do basically everything. We can turn our hydrogen, atmospheric and iron thrusters off. We can do a jump for 3,132 kilometers. We then have controls for our connectors. We then have a parachute hatch, which is quite sneakily hidden away on here. I didn't actually see the parachute hatch on here when I went around. We've got hydrogen tanks on and off, hydrogen engines on and off for additional power. We then got our lights on and off, so that will be controlling the lights. You should be able to see it in there. On and off. Our antenna, our beacon, our ore detector, our air vents. We can then close up our hangar doors like so, manual control like that. Our batteries to recharge or auto and our turrets on and off. On tab number three, we've got some manual controls over our turrets. We can just spin around and start shooting stuff like so. There is the other turret. We can control our interior turrets. And that's about it. So it does have quite a lot of things going on with it. And we do have one great view from our flight seat, which makes it great to fly in first person view. 
get a nice big view all the way around us so we can make sure we're not going to crash into anything and we can see everything on the coming. So now it's time for a little thruster test. So going forwards, this is the speed we get with absolutely everything turned on. We are relatively fast for a transport vessel and stopping is much slower. So we're great at going forwards, so we're good at escaping from enemies. But stopping could be a bit problematic unless you do a 180 and boost forwards like so. Going left and going right were pretty slow, going down, again very slow, but going up on the other hand is bloody fast. So forwards and up are the fastest and everything else is mediocre to slow. As for mouse control, we've got plenty of control, there's not any weight to it, it's that perfect precise movement that you generally want to have with a ship. So now it's time to finish off the Gladius by ramming it into the starting green base at full speed. So here we go, we're now at full speed, we're just going to ramp straight into this station, here we go. And boosh, all the way through. Now where exactly am I and why is the frame rate so low? So there is part of the ship, I think, no that's part of the station, there is the ship. It's largely in one piece actually, we lost a lot of the front, but we also kept a lot of the back and the large cargo container and the hydrogen tank survived which is bloody fantastic stuff. So worst case scenario, if you were to charge straight into somebody or somebody's base, you can still recover the ship and perhaps make a smaller one out of it. But anyway, that is it for the Gladius. It's a fantastic exploration vessel. If you wish to do maybe some of the long hauling contracts from the Economy Deluxe stuff, or just want to explore space in a survival game in comfort. So it'll be in the description below if you wish to download and play around with it yourself and I'll be back with another showcase video some point soon. Bye bye.